who see that their role as men is important in the family. And men, if you could get anything out of just the testimony today, if you come to a place when you realize that there's nothing more important, no, no task, no duty greater that God has given you than the task to raise your children to love God and to teach them what manhood is. So society says manhood is something that it's not at all. And a real man is a, is a person who understands duty, understands compassion and love, and is devoted to his family. And I think of just my relationship with my father, and we're probably closer than we've ever been our whole lives in the last several years. The things that matter to us, the memories that we hold today are family memories. They're not things that I did with my friends or my dad did with his friends. They're things that we did as a family with my dad leading. And it's invaluable. And men, if you haven't always been what you ought to be, maybe you've been the kind of man that wasn't devoted to your children, you weren't what you should have been as a father. You're living and you've got breath. And that means you can be the man God wants you to be. And I challenge you to that. Listen to the testimonies that are shared and take a challenge uh, from it as well. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to share? All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and have our offering this morning. Thank you for sharing those things. It's encouraging and challenging. Men are different than ladies, by the way. You have to be really nice to ladies on Mother's Day. But, uh, you know, anyway, I'll talk about that in a minute when we get ready to preach. Um, <laughs> Brother Alex, I think everyone this morning is familiar with the offering in our church, and so I'll just ask you to pray and ask the Lord's blessing on it. Heavenly Father, God, I'm so grateful to you for today and just bring goodness to us. Thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. The Lord, as we um, honor our fathers they've given us, we do thank you for them. But more importantly, Lord, we thank you that you are our Heavenly Father who takes care of us. The Lord, as we have service uh, today, help our hearts to be open. And through the preaching of your word, please help uh, Pastor Price as he preaches, fill with your Holy Spirit. Help us have hearts to listen and to obey your word. Please, with it, please be with this offering. Lord, help it to be used to further your kingdom. Help us reach the lost in Fort Lauderdale. We ask this in Jesus' name. change to be like Jesus. And this morning, in our service, in the same way that Elkanah would go up every year and make a vow to God, this morning you could, uh, right where you're at, go to God in prayer and say, God, you know what? I have not been faithful in this area. But God, by your grace, you've showed me this truth and how important it is, and I'm going to do right by it. I'm going to commit this to you. And I'm going to ask for your help with it, but God, this is what I'm going to be as a father from here on. You know, many of, many of us men would have to say, God, I haven't been everything I ought to be, but you've been gracious instead. Maybe you ought to offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Say, God, thank you for what you've done in spite of me. From, from now on, God, I'm going to commit to having a godly relationship with you. And friend, that's important. It might be that you're here this morning and you say, well, you know what? I don't even know God. I don't even know Him. I know that there's a God in heaven, and I know some things that the Bible says about God. But personally, God's not real to me. Personally, God's never spoken to me. His Holy Spirit's never talked to me. And friend, I have to say to you this morning, we didn't preach a message about how to know God. Let me share with you a couple of things that you could uh, know this morning and leave here knowing God personally. First of all, you have to know that you're a sinner. And that's not hard to know, is it? You find this man, Elkanah, that God greatly used. But yet, you and I can look at his life and say these things aren't consistent and it caused problems in his home. And yet God was gracious to him and how come? Why was that? Well, because he loved God. How do you love God? Well, the Bible says all sin and come short of the glory of God. Sin makes us God's enemy.
But the Bible also says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's simply this. Because of our sin, we deserve to be judged by Holy God. We deserve to stand before Holy God and have Him judge us for what we are, and that is wicked. And wickedness is against God. But yet God, the Bible says, showed His love to us, commended His love toward us, and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, we know the story of the cross, don't we? How that Jesus came and He was came in the form of man, but He wasn't like a man in that He never sinned. And even though sin was passed upon all men through Adam's race, Jesus Christ came and he wasn't born of a man. He was the son of God. He was born of a virgin. And he never sinned. And he died for our sin. You know what that means? It means that the sins that you have committed and will commit were placed on Jesus and God judged him for what we did. It's called substitution. It's an atonement. And the Bible says that when you trust Jesus as your Savior, the righteousness of God is placed on us. You know, God doesn't forgive sin because we're sorry. God forgives sin because Jesus paid for it. And He became the payment for our sin. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ, your Savior, you could do it simply like this. You say, God, I know I'm a sinner. But I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was buried and rose again. He's risen. He's in heaven with God. He did what no man could do. And the, the Bible says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can say, God, I want to be saved because of what Jesus did when He died for my sin. You know, it was very personal when Jesus died on the cross. He died because of the sins that I committed. And God took my sin when I asked God to save me for the free gift of eternal life, and He placed it on Jesus. And He took Jesus' righteousness and placed it on me. And friend, God's Holy Spirit came to live in me. And now I can pray and I know God. And God speaks to me. And if you don't know God, it's as simple as asking God to save you because of what Jesus did when He became sin free. If you're here this morning, that's what the invitation's for. We're going to sing only trust Him. And as we sing, if God spoke in your heart, you do business with Him as He leads. You can pray right where you're at. If you need help, you need Bible answers, we're here for you. Feel free to come forward and, and ask for uh, Bible counsel or even ask after the invitation. We'd be glad to help you with that. Come every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord. And He will surely give you rest by trusting in His word. Sing only trust Him. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him. that you're a God in whom we can trust. And God, we recognize this morning that we don't have the answers for all the problems that are in life, but Jesus Christ is the answer. Lord, I ask that you would encourage the hearts of the men that are here today. Father, bring conviction where we need it. But Lord, help, help us to see very plainly how that you can use a person who simply loves you. And help us to understand the importance of men having a walk with you and a relationship with you. And not just telling our children what they ought to do, but actually being what we ought to be so they can see what a real man is. Lord, I ask that you would bless the men that are here today, encourage their hearts. God, help us to be mindful to call our parents and our fathers today and to thank them for the role that they played in showing us you. And God, thank them for being our fathers. Lord, I do praise you for giving me my father. I wouldn't have him be any different than the man that you made him to be. And I'm just so grateful that you gave me my father. Thank you for the fathers that we've had. Uh, bless us now this afternoon. Bring us back this evening. God, I ask you to bless our service tonight and uh, help us in a very special way to be able to demonstrate our love to Jaime and Yvonne tonight after the service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for being here this morning. You're dismissed.